Welcome back, everyone, to another match. It's going to be Rar versus Randy, because Rar keeps getting matched with people. I thought it'd be Randy versus Golda, so did they. It was not. We're on Trojan Hills, though, which I love. My favorite map. I mean, Randy going for the Cloakbot Factory, and Rar going for the Heavy Tank Factory. Interesting choice. I haven't seen them go Heavy Tank fairly recently. I'm guessing they're going to be setting up a fairly quick Ogre Push. Possibly Ogre Reaver, or Ogre Reaper. No, Minotaur. So it's called now. Ogre Minotaur Push. Just given their style... But I haven't seen them play much heavy tanks, so maybe they'll just go for a bunch of welders. Like, welder rush. You could do that, by the way. Welders deal 72 DPS compared to Glaive's 120. They're actually not bad for damage. You could actually do a welder rush. It'd be super expensive because they're 220 each, but you could literally pull off a welder rush in this game. It would, like, good luck actually doing it. But that would be amazing. So anyway, I probably th I don't think we're going to see that. We might see Rar Commander plus Welder. That would be cool. I kind of doubt it, but that'd be pretty cool. I mean, I, I got to think of that. Maybe I'll throw that in at one point. I'm not going to be doing much more tonight. I think this is actually going to be the last game I cast, but we'll see. However, I'm not, I've done the matchmaking earlier. I think I might actually keep this, keep this format for following weeks, though. I might actually decide to, I might actually start earlier and then do some matchmaking and do some of the of the replay casting as well. I don't think I'm going to do more campaign casting. It's a pretty good campaign. I just don't know if that's super interesting to have more playing through the campaign. But, I mean, if people want it, I could. Like, an hour campaign, an hour of matchmaking, and an hour of casts. That I can do. Either way, though, we do have the first level assaults from Randy. Already also expanding massively. Essentially just using the Glaives as a way of keeping the expansion safe, because, well... In theory, Rar wouldn't be going forward when the Glaze are attacking their base. In practice, though, Rar just isn't building a lot of rush forces. They built the two welders right, right at the beginning. They have another welder as well. They have the commander, of course, upgrading because it's Rar. And have the one Kodachi, that one Kodachi going forward to do what they can. Probably going to find a little bit of value. Maybe get rid of this Lotus, maybe. If it backs off and doesn't stay there and die. Which it really should do. I'm not sure why the unit AI isn't set to do that. I mean, I know why. It's because Unit AI does not bother skirmishing against beam lasers. Because beam lasers can't be dodged. The thing, the logic is that there's no point moving. The beam laser can't be dodged. So just stay put. However, in the case of Kodachi's, because they're hit and run, they could fire the shot, pull out, pull back in, fire the shot again as soon as the reload happens. But it's not set up to do that. I'm a bit surprised, but it isn't. I guess that might be an entirely different class of unit, like hit and run units, like daggers, Kodachi's... Um, ogres, maybe? It's, it's a question of, like, low range, high alpha, low, or high alpha, high reload time. That combination of things is a bit specific, but it is the one case where pulling away from the Lotus in order to reload and then coming back in is a really important thing to do. But it's also low range, because if the range is high, I guess moderators could have that too, even though they're high range. Against high enough ranged opponents that would still be relevant. Hmm. Weird. Three hours of skirmish against Circuit Brutal. Finds have suggest that? No. How about no? Much rather play against humans. At this point, though, actually, Rar, speaking of humans, which Rar is, I assume, they are managing to get in a fair bit of defense as well as getting some decent reclaim. Randy's still ahead for economy. I mean, this is Randy's thing. They are a pro Starcraft player. They do have a lot of... Actually, Micro is their biggest thing. Economy, however, is another strong suit of theirs. Massive expansion. Make sure that they are keeping their own money much greater than their opponents so they can build more stuff, and by building more stuff, just win. Even though in 0k, building more stuff doesn't always work because unit counters are actually reasonably strong, despite the fact that they are so technically soft counters. No armor types, just the properties of units tend to interact in such a way that the counter structure is reasonably firm. Still, though, we have a lot of welders, and we already mentioned before, welders are the OP tank unit. Every tank player should go for that Welder Rush at least once in their life. If it works, let me know. Send me the replay. I'd love to watch it. Which actually reminds me, I do have a re request replay that I got. But I'm not doing replays right now, so... Hmm. I kind of wish I hadn't forgotten about that. Actually, you know what? No, that's fine. Because I'm probably going to... I'm going to be doing more 0k casting. Like, now that it's more active, I'm probably going to do Tuesdays as, Or, no, Mondays as well. Like Mondays, I can do. 
Because, yeah, with that, I should be able to get in a lot more. Because I wasn't really doing Mondays before, because not many people were on Monday in the evenings. But now with so many people in the lobby, I can actually do that, and people will come in to watch. So, hey, that'd be a thing to do. And then I can do more replay casts then. We'll see. We'll see what I do. Format's still kind of up in the air. At this point, what's not up in the air, though, is the fact that Rar is managing to get in a fair bit with the Kodachis. They are taking some damage from the from those Ronin, but, again, hit and run units. They're able to just get around and deal with them. A few more Ronin go down. Ooh, that Phantom does not quite manage to get the Kodachi. Good snipe shot, though. Just barely missing. Now, Kodachi able to duke that, but the more important thing to me, though, is that Rar is actually getting in the back lines. Pushing forward their commander and expanding right inside of Randy's base. I mean, look at the way this is set up. This is really dangerous. This entire section here could easily be torn apart by Randy's forces, but they're so distracted by the Kodachis that they're not even thinking to go back. And now the Welders can come front and actually deal with the Ronin because Welders are the most OP tank unit in the world. Well, not really. I'd... For the record, Welders are not the most OP tank unit in the world. The tank factory in general is actually a little bit... It has a bit of a hard time in the early stages of a 1v1. So to be quite honest, the tank factory is probably C-tier. Still though, of the tank factory, the welder is a quite strong unit, and the fact that it is strong is a big reason the tank factory is even viable in 1v1. But, unfortunately, that does not save them against phantoms. Still though, RAR at this point, they have that backline, they have the economy advantage, the phantoms coming in here, and should be able to take out RAR's commander, take a couple shots, but the commander isn't really upgraded Nowhere near as much as Rar normally does. Two more shots and the Phantom will do, and that's another, what, 15 seconds? 20 seconds? No, 20 seconds each. So, it will be another half minute. Rar's Commander, I like it. Getting a little behind this, this Stinger, realizing the direction. That Stinger's in the way! Nice, I like it. Good use of line of sight mechanics, Rar. But even then, though, that Stinger is not going to last too long. This Phantom can't just do much beyond hitting it, though, and that Stinger... Oof. If it's getting repaired, yes, it's still alive. The next shot will kill it, but it's done a bunch of damage in the meantime. So, hey, that's still a thing. And at the same time, Randy moving their commander around the front, because they're also doing an infiltration play into Rar's back line. So at least that's something. But now, Rar, again, the, the Lotus is coming in here. Randy has to deal with that with their commander, and the Welders, they're there. They're strong. They got the defenses built, and... They're building defenses to stop Randy from getting outside of their own base. Like, Randy can really just block their commander inside of the base here and have no problems. I mean, there is one welder, so, you know, they might die. But really, that, that commander should be okay. At the same time, though, the pillagers, same can't be said there. They are managing to get rid of the Ronin, no problem. And at this point, we are seeing Glaives to counter that, which is a very good move. I do think Glaives are the most comfortable unit Randy has. I've seen the way Randy plays with Glaives. Randy is really good with Glaives. Like, their micro with the Glaives is amazing. You can, like, we can really tell they are a pro former StarCraft pro when you see how they use their Glaives. Now, right now, it's not going to be super obvious because it's just defenses, so it's no big deal. But yeah, that was the thing that made me realize, oh yeah, this person really knows how to micro well. Like, they, they've got that, they've got that attention, they've got the multitasking skill, they had that well practiced. You can really tell with that. However, the Phantom does lose sight. Just barely. Wait, what was my... No, that was clear. Anyway. Yeah, the Phantom does lose sight of it, which is a bit of a pain. A bit of a shame. But that's fine. I mean, it does force Randy back. Or sorry, it does force Rar back a little bit. But the point is, they still got what they wanted. The only downside is they don't have much production. They only have one caretaker in the back line. Nothing else push pushing that factory. Oh, they could have so much more. They could have possibly won by now. Like, or just use some of the welders here. Build up the factory. And that's 7.5 metal each. That's 15 metal. You could easily burn all this stuff in storage. That's a real shame. We have construction around the map, which is nice. That's helping. But it's only going to do so much. And, of course, reclaim is going to happen. This caretaker is going to start reclaiming as soon as the repair is done. And once that happens, there's not much else that's going to happen. That's going to work. At the very least, the center is still fine. I mean, for, Ra for Rar's sake, they are able to hold it. But Randy, able to flank on both sides, able to infiltrate into the main base, drive a wedge between the southeast and the rest of Rar's base. And Rar... Not focusing on that as much. And like I said, primarily not focusing on production. They're still falling behind. They do, thankfully for them, have a lot of static defense being built, so their metal isn't being wasted. It's just that they also aren't building a bunch of units. They aren't using the metal in the factory. They did excess quite a bit in the meantime. I mean, they had the excess... I really wish this would be... 
set up so that it was actually always here. Anyway, they had the excess, and that excess, 800 metal excess, when you consider, I guess, 2,000 metal in terms of attrition, and the army value is about even. But still, if they didn't have that excess, they would have 400 metal advantage in army value instead of a 400 metal deficit. So it's not nothing. But they are holding their own regardless. Regardless of that, regardless, since though, Randy in the back lines with more pickets, able to tear apart the southeast, essentially get revenge for what happened from RAR, but at the same time, RAR, they're managing to get back in, they're harassed back, maybe get rid of a couple Conjurers. Really, please, target the Conjurers. That's, that's your target. You're not going to be able to kill anything else. Get the Conjurers, kill them. You always want to kill workers. Always, always, always. Workers provide so much if they're still left, if they're left alive and left to their own devices. And, especially with the repairs going on, that Lotus will never die. Rar finally targeting the Conjurers, but unfortunately that Lotus is up, does manage to kill the Kodachi. The second Kodachi coming in here will finish things off, but again, that means Rar doesn't have that to hit the front line, which means the Glaze can come in and have a field day. There is enough in the way of Lotuses to at least stop about half of them, but that's only half of them. The rest will be able to push through. And once they punch through, that Pillager is dead, and the Caretaker is dead, everything is dead. There's that pillager going down already. Exactly what I was talking about. The Lotus, however, actually will do its job. The Glaives did manage to kill the pillager, or one of the pillagers. That is not as big as they'd like. It's kind of the Nemesis job at this point to continue pushing forward and get rid of the defenses here that have been built up. And at the same time, Rar in the back lines, putting, Kodachi, putting Randy in a bit of an awkward position when it comes to multitasking. I'm a bit surprised the Nemesis didn't go over to deal with the Kodachis up till now, but they are going for it. So at the very least, they can finish that off. Oh, and Kingstad in chat confirming, because they're in a 2v2, that welders are indeed the most OP tank unit. I was half joking. Half joking. They're confirming I was really actually not joking at all. And at this point, the Nimbus coming in for raid, which I do agree with. There are no copperheads up. There, there's nothing. Like, or Ettons, that's what it's called now. There's no Ettons up. There's nothing mobile anti-air. So unless they're near the Razors, which they, they aren't. They're Razors in the center of the map, so no problem there. The Kodachis aren't going to have an easy time of it. However, the Nimbus is going forward instead, not focusing on the Kodachis. That's awkward. At any rate, that gives the Kodachis a lot of room to play with. But still, the economy remains in favor of Randy. And despite the 3,000 medal lead, Randy has a 5,000 medal or 4,000 medal advantage when it comes to unit value. They've used about that much more medal too. But this is this is a considerable boost in efficiency. Like, I really would kind of wish Rar would build some actual Ettons. Get some mobile anti-air. But, at least they have some anti-air dotted around the map, so it's a little hard for the Nimbuses to just do whatever they want. Still, though, there's a lot they could be doing to stop that. A lot Rar could be doing to stop all this stuff. So, with that backline raid coming in here, that Welder has been idle this entire game, by the way. Just hanging back, having a vacation. Not going to be able to do much, though, because it can't really shoot up that well. I think the Brawler might be low enough that it can, if it's close. But I'm not sure. At any rate, most of them aren't trying. They are forced back, and there's just no anti-air to deal with this stuff. There we go. There's the Ettons, finally. Rar realizing they really have to build that up. However, again, they have a lot of metal reclaimed, not a lot of caretakers. I don't know why they aren't building caretakers. It's like, just, just build a caretaker. Make that, make that a thing. Just boom. Boom. Build the caretakers. Get all that economy going. Make the short bursts of economic advantage become a lot of units that become value that end up destroying your opponents. Because Rar had a shot at this game. I think now it's a little late. Unless they manage to get rid of the Nimbuses efficiently, I don't see this working out in their favor. And honestly, the main way I'd see doing that would be getting a gunship plant or getting an airplane plant and getting anti-air units. Like getting Swifts or getting Tridents. That's the way I can see them doing it. I don't see any other way. Just because from the ground forces. There's so many Nimbuses that the Ettons can't fire fast enough to deal with it. If they had, like, three or four Ettons, they have been building Ettons from before. If they had an army of Ettons, or a small, a small squad of Ettons, they'd be able to take care of the Nimbuses. But they don't. That's a bit of a shame. So yeah, without that, I'm not really sure what they can do other than... Well, die, I guess. I mean, they're they're being surrounded. There was a really good shot when they took it to the northwest. Rar had a great chance of getting in, getting in the back, and dealing a bunch of damage. The Phantom did a great job stopping it, but even at the same time, there was enough money from Rar. They could have outproduced Randy, punched through the center, and then won the game there. Or got rid of their commander, stopped this entire infiltration from happening. 
and then one there. But unfortunately, they weren't able to do so, and now at this point, they don't really have the economy to make that work. Can the Nimbus not fire at that angle? Seriously, the Nimbus can't fire at that angle. That is bizarre. Well, at any rate, that is, however, game. RAR, unfortunately, unable to take advantage of the economy advantages they had, and that means they aren't really able to take this game. Still, though, not a bad match. RAR did pull it out a fair bit, and like I said, did manage to get an advantage a few times, so it was, it was potentially anyone's game, but Randy has ultimately out eco RAR, and those are the Glaives and the Knights in there just to finish everything off. Lotus is doing what they can, but there just aren't enough of them. And now all these wind generators are so close together. The main defense right now is the wind generator death explosions killing the glaives off as they come in. And even then, with the glaives that died to those death explosions, it's still not quite enough to finish it. And that should be game. Rar likely to throw in the towel fairly soon. Their commander is in the back lines. How upgraded is it? Not very. Yeah, I don't see Rar holding on at this point. Their commander might be going for a last ditch push in the back lines, which won't do anything. And no, they realize it won't do anything. There's the towel. There's the GG. And that is game. So Randy taking it. Like I said, pretty close for economy. Reasonably close for metal usage for most of the game. Army value, I mean, RAR had an advantage at one point and could have had an even larger advantage around this, like this area here. At about like the 8 to 10 minute mark, 8 through 10 minute mark. They could have gotten an advantage if they had used the metal they had gotten. Because they had an income advantage. Well, they just lost the income advantage at that point, at that point but it was close. So yeah, like around here, they could have gotten it. And then that could have turned out an army value advantage here. That could have snowballed from there and then made it very difficult for Randy to actually get forward. Especially if the commander had been killed. If Randy had lost their commander and it was heavily damaged, it could have been lost when it was around here. And it was fighting all the welders here. If a few units just come around the back and destroyed it. Like a few Kodachis come around the back and just starting to tear it apart. That would have meant the entire back line would have been completely open. Randy wouldn't have been able to expand into Rar's base while Rar was doing the same thing. At that point, Randy would have had far less firepower, far less push power, and Rar could have swept in on the right side, because they already had a defensive bulwark. They could have used that as a fire base to expand over to the right side, tear apart all of Randy's eastern expansions, and then collapse onto the main base. That would have been the that would have been the other way that this could have gone. That, however, was not the way it went. So, good job, Randy. And Oh. There is apparently another game. Is that 2v2 that is being played? Okay, sure. I don't see... Okay, there it is. Ah, it's four minutes in. Okay, let's go. 